What's up everybody and welcome to my Monday Night Raw review. A lot of big things happening tonight in Albany, New York. With uh, Paul Heyman and CM Punk kicking off the show. Telling them if the, that the ref screwed up, whatever his name was. So they will hold the show hostage until justice will be served. And this referee came out. Looked like he was about to choke on the mic anyway. Talk about it's his fault. It's his first main event match. Why are you even hired then if you haven't even been a referee this long in the WWE? And AJ pretty much came out talking about you can't come around talking about the refs and everything. And what, why does she have an info punk? And punk just pretty much goes back to two months ago her proposing and talking about all the stuff. She all said about punk and text messages and stuff. And it was kind of weird because Paul Heyman got on the mic and he pretty much talked about why this is happening. But he got on the mic and I don't I don't know why he just kinda went to AJ. It was kinda it's like it was it was funny but it was strange as hell also. Like cause he imitated the AJ thing two months ago with the proposal thing and it like he just did the same thing, oh the next power couple, but it wasn't really gonna work and I don't understand that part. Pretty much AJ slapping Paul Heyman in. Uh, moving on into the show, Dolph Ziggler going against Kofi Kingston. Uh, pretty much had to kick out Vic Guerrero on our truth with the little Jimmy thing. I'm really tired of this little Jimmy thing now. Real good match by uh, Kofi Kingston. Our truth really enjoyed the match. I'm sorry, Kofi Kingston and Dolph Ziggler. Great match. I gotta say that out there tonight. Um, real good. Uh, had Jr. and Michael Cole on commentary, so I really did enjoy that match though. I thought it was it was really decent. I'll give it that. Real good. Um, moving on also into the night show. We had... Sorry. Uh, the return of Mick Foley. The special guest, presume. Mick Foley was here tonight. Talking about uh, the hell of a sale that was coming up. And CM Punk. Pretty much. And this was true about him sending that text message to CM Punk. You know, saying that um, he's real big right now. Last year when Punk did the shoot and won the WWE title. And he pretty much talked. And I got to say, it was a good-ass promo then. Because um, CM Punk and him was on the mic. So, like, why does he need a mouthpiece from Paul Heyman? Paul Heyman's good business, business, but he'll just lead you down along the road. Probably have you fall along the way. Paul Heyman. And um, he said, you can't just go by the statistics of title days. He's talking about the moments in Hell in a Cell. So like him. Sure, it's in his career. Tell me he's been a three-time WWF champion or WWE champion, you want to call it. And people like Shawn Michaels in the Hell in a Cell. Triple H. Undertaker. So I got to say, it was a good-ass promo. With um, CM Punk and Paul Heyman. So I really did enjoy that one. Ryback going against The Miz. It's a good match. We're getting Ryback better, bigger competition. Giving the Akino champion. Almost, if anybody saw that fan come in tonight, I got to tell it was funny. Tried to jump in during the match. A fan tried to rush into the ring. I don't know why that happened. If anybody saw that. Uh, Ryback picking up the win pretty much over The Miz. He'll probably get a title shot soon enough. Later in time. Uh, other stuff that happened on the show tonight for Monday Night Raw. Wade Barrett going against Tyson Kidd. Barrett picking up the win. Uh, uh, it was, um, I don't know if people started chanting, we won Nexus now. And people keep, bet bo a lot of botched moves tonight and announcing anyway on this show. But uh, Barrett picked up the win. Whatever. Um, the Jerry Lawler interview happened. Uh, it was a good interview with him, him and Cole. It, it was it was kind of short, but they had the interview it was real good. Lawler's pretty much still in recuperation. He's better. I guess the ventilation too is making him a little bit. You know, his voice sounds raspy. But I don't really mind Jerry Lawler's back on commentary and that. It's good that he's getting better, but I still rather have Jim Ross on commentary. And since JBL is you no know, climbing Mount Kilimanjaro, um. I don't really. I like um, Jr. back on commentary, and I guess putting Cole on there also. AJ, whatever this weird personality thing again, putting up Bertha Del Rio, David Otunga, 
and Ricardo Rodriguez in a match against Sheamus Mysterio and Sin Cara. Yeah, it was a good match. Good six-man tag. It was kind of funny with Ricardo in the ring, but it pretty much ended off with um, um, Sheamus doing that. Whatever. I guess I, I would go with Booker called the Irish Hand Grenade. With those punches, then a 619, and then pretty much like a Sentai or a Swan Time Bomb. What Sin Cara does, picked up the win, then bro kick on David Otunga after the match. I don't know if Del Rio's ever going to get another World Heavyweight title shot, though, so I don't know about that. Uh, the Kane and Daniel Bryan segments were funny. I gotta say that. And I know they imitated one of them off of WrestleMania 21. You can look it up with the Kurt Angle and, and Chris Emmy and then Linda McMahon showing up then. I know one of those segments, but it was real funny with Kane and Daniel Bryan in a, in a, re in a restaurant. Primetime players going against Zack Ryder and Santino. Primetime players picking up the win. The team name for Kane Daniel Bryan, Team Hell No. And I am not lying people that is the team name. And thank God it was not Team Friendship because for once WWE took their own heads out of their own asses and stopped with these gay ass vote tag teams at the time, whatever voting system they do, and actually do something that was actually, I don't know if it's a decent tag name, you guys tell me what you think, but as long as it wasn't fucking Team Friendship, I really don't mind. But uh, Kane and Daniel Bryan were there, they heard the name, and pretty much sent out Cody Rhodes coming to attack. Now, I guess they call themselves t Team Scholar. Scholar Rhodes. Rhodes Scholar, I guess. And a lot of tag teams are forming now in the WWE, and I guess people are. T now, you may cannot agree with me if you want, but I gotta say, the tag team division is set on fire. They are setting people on their asses right now. The tag team division is on fire and they are gunning for those tag team championships. And I'm glad the tag teams are kind of getting back into a a time when you can actually give a damn about the tag team champions. And I'm saying there's a lot of tag team champions. Even ones I'm being formed right now with Rhodes and and Sandow. Even, and I'll say, I'll say the primetime players. Primo and Epico. Kofi Kingston are true. I guess Tyson, Ken, Justin Gabriel, that's technically a tag team. The Usos. Um, I, hey, correct, uh, you just name any uh, tag teams that have in the WWE if you want, but I gotta say the tag team division is kind of getting set on fire right now. And I am really enjoying it like it used to be, where you can actually give a damn about the tag team titles. You guys tell me what you think and tell me if it's going good or not. Um, Beth Phoenix and Eve going against Layla and Alicia Fox. Beth Phoenix and Eve picking up the win. It looks like Beth Phoenix lost a, lost a lot of muscle mass for some reason. She looks skinnier. I don't know why. But then Caitlyn comes out and says she has the footage of her being attacked and it was, whatever, a blonde attack. And I guess you think it's Beth Phoenix and, I don't know, Eve just took her out then and it looked like the crowd didn't even really care. So... It, it didn't even look, it was a short ass Diva match, a Divas match. Nobody didn't really care that much. Whatever, I, I didn't even care that much. It happened, it happened. Um, other stuff that happened tonight on Monday Night Raw, we also had Brothers Clay going against Lord Tenzai, and then Big Show coming out in the middle of the match. And I, where the hell has Big Show been anyway? Big, the last time I saw Big Show was like the night after SummerSlam, and I ain't seen him since. I guess Big Show's back to take out everybody else, pulling knockout punches on people. Like, I don't even know where the hell Big Show's been, and I had to put him in a main event with Randy Orton this Friday on SmackDown. So I have no idea where the Big Show has been in the past, I don't know how many months now, but whatever, it's Big Show. I didn't even know he was saying it. It looked like the crowd almost kind of popped for him a little too. The, the crowd was really kind of hyped into when he, his interest in music. Hit. But a good times of well, and I guess the crowd kind of popped for Big Show, if you ask me. Uh, other stuff to add on to the show tonight for Monday Night Raw. Uh, pretty much the ending, John Cena coming out. Uh, we don't know how long Cena will be gone. It's supposedly six weeks. They said he'll probably be back at the pay-per-view. I guess that may happen to Hell in a Cell. Because you see his arm is, you know, kind of, I guess, broken, ch being, chips being taken out of it. And um, they said, he, because I don't know who lied on the, somebody said it was going to be 14 days. It's going to be six weeks. 
and he pretty much talking about the Arise Above Cancer thing, and he wanted to call CM Punk something, but once again, WWE pulls this stupid crap off by giving Cena these retarded promos. He's not Jim Carrey. Can we please get more serious promos like he did a couple of weeks ago at CM Punk and when Bret Hart was there? Like, like give him promos like that. That's where you actually thought, like, holy shit, this guy is actually kind of good-ass promo tonight. Uh, the promo tonight, once again, is the PG stuff. It's like, oh, I hope that was PG enough. Uh, listen, nobody else wants to see these PG promos or funny stuff from Cena. We want to see more of a serious Cena. We want that ruthless aggression back, people. You hear me? Ruthless aggression. He tried to get a little more serious into it. CM Punk pretty much came out talking about him. He's not going to be like that. He's just, well, CM Punk is technically, even though people kind of chanting his name at the beginning of the show, even though he's supposed to be a heel, but I guess people are now taking CM Punk as a full-fledged heel now, I guess. Even though they have now, but pretty much Punk talking about the fans, I'm to shut up, and now he's going to beat Cena if he's even at the pay-per-view. And he's going to turn around for five seconds, and if he turns around, he better be out of the ring. And Cena hit him with a lead pipe, and he just gave the pipe to a fan for some reason. I don't know why. But um, he hit Cena with a pipe, and he said, Real me with Pink, and it, it was alright as a promo, but CM Punk, CM Punk, I gotta say, he was real good. He's good as a heel, and Paul Heyman being as as more awesomeness, I guess. And uh, Cena did like an alright, but, but we, we gotta stop this PG funniness from Cena with these, these gay ass promos. Come on, be more serious like we have with Bret Hart. That was one great one. And then pretty much Punk coming in the back, he looked at Foley, walked off, and he kicked Foley in the nuts. And then when he, t uh, he turned around, like, like, Ryback is standing there. Like, wait, wait, Ryback is standing there for Mick Foley? You're like, I, I can't expect a legend to probably show up or somebody else in the back, but, like, Ryback showing up for Mick Foley? Like, like are we gonna really gonna put Ryback in the, the title picture now for the WWE title? Like, if, what, if Cena doesn't do the pay-per-view, Ryback's gonna be in it? That It just felt like a strange bit of an ending for some reason. I, I don't know, it, it looks strange for some reason. It's like, Ryback they even fit that picture. Like, Punk's just back, like, who the hell is that? And, like, Ryback's helping Mick Foley now? It was kind of strange at the end. But it was a decent uh, show. I said it was a good show tonight for Monday Night Raw. Better than the crap they had last week, because it was horrible, really, for my, last Monday Night's Raw. And uh, I had to say, this Monday Night Raw, it did real good. These three-hour Raws to me somewhat exhausting now for some reason. I don't know why, but they are. But I'm going to end the show right this right here, this review. Uh, comment, subscribe, you know, you know, it's me, it's me, the H-double-O-D, coming to your town, I'm wearing the brown, more sharper than a claw, I just did this review to Monday Night Raw, so I'm going to end it here. <clears throat> Sorry. But uh, you know what I am, you know what I do, you know where it is, you know it's here, comment, subscribe, keep watching the show. Get ready for the pay uh, I guess next pay-per-view. Watch SmackDown this Friday and tell me what you think about this Monday Night Raw and tonight's review. So I'm gonna be out of here. Peace.